and amen. Praise the Lord. If you want to go ahead and turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3, tonight is really going to be the Bible study of Bible studies because we're really just going to blow through some scriptures here for a few minutes tonight concerning the wondrous righteousness of God. I'm not going to say I'm sorry for never stopping to preach on righteousness and talk about it. I'm not going to apologize for it because it is the context of the word of God. Everything God did was right. It was righteous. We messed it up and became unrighteous. Everything God's done since then, everything he's been a part of and, 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 and showed his great mercy and grace through is that which is righteous. It's all about his righteousness. So as we go through these scriptures tonight, let us understand that God's focus is righteousness. He's, he's focused on, when we say saving a lost race, that means making that which is unrighteous righteous so he can get us home. Hallelujah. Only the righteous are going home. And the only ones who are righteous are those who are trusting in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That's what made us righteous. So let's go through these scriptures tonight. I believe the Lord's going to give us a little bit more in-depth knowledge because my goal is, Every personal Bible study I have, every session that I teach, at the end of that session, my goal is for myself and everyone to have a greater dependence upon Christ, a, a greater trust in him, love for him, dependence upon him, and respect and surrender to him. So uh, that's what we should get out of every Bible study, every church service. How many of you know if you come to a church or a Bible study that's preaching the right message and you got bondages in your life, you can leave free. You can leave free. You don't have to leave free, but if you surrender to the truth of Jesus Christ and what he did at Calvary, which was the righteous work of God, the bondages will be broken in your life. So you need to think about that. These people that just go to church after church after church service and they're not being changed, it's either because they're not hearing the truth that can change them or they are hearing it and they're refusing to be changed because the truth will make you free. It, it ain't no maybes or mites. If you believe the truth, you will be made free because God can't lie and that's what he promised, amen? So I pray that God would do a work in all of our hearts tonight as we hear the word of the Lord. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says all Scripture, that means all Scripture, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And that's what we're looking for, folks. We're looking for instruction because the, the, the fruit has to be the fruit of righteousness. And when it is, we know that we've been instructed in righteousness through what? The word of God and our surrender to that, which is what we mean by faith. So, now I'm going to give you this. I think I, it came out in one of my teaching sessions. I, I'm teaching five days a week. By the way, next week I'm off. If I forgot to say anything, I'll be uh, teaching on Wednesday and I'll be there Sunday, but I won't be doing anything. No, no sessions next week. Uh, so I'm just letting you know. Uh, but w listen to this phrase. This is, the way, this is the process of God right here. The word, the faith, the work, and the fruit. All four of those are that of righteousness. The word of righteousness, the faith, that's of righteousness, the work, that's of righteousness, and the fruit, the fruits that are of righteousness. And it's that way. And as we teach here at Crossway Church, and I hope more and more are across the world, that Jesus, whenever we're hearing anything from the word, the picture is Christ. The picture is Christ. Jesus is the living word that by faith laid his life down by grace through faith. He did the righteous work, Isaiah 32, 17, and the fruit is that of his righteous work, the fruits of righteousness. It's all about righteousness. You can't get away from it. If Listen, we say it's all about Jesus, but then we talk about everything else. If it's all about Jesus, let's talk about Jesus. Let's talk about the things that Jesus uh, mediates to give us and they all come through the fruits 
of righteousness, the fruit of what he's doing, the fruit of his work, the fruit of the word, the fruit of true biblical faith. So we're starting with that first one, the word. And I gave you that one for instruction. All scripture is for instruction in righteousness. But it only, God only, hear it, God only instructs us in righteousness. That means that path of righteousness. And you hear me, those of you that follow our teaching here, you hear me say it all the time, Proverbs 12, 17, he that speaks truth, that's the Holy Spirit, shows forth righteousness. Why? So that he can guide you in the truth. Jesus said that's what he'd do when he come. He would guide you into all truth. And the path that he has you on is the path of righteousness where the only place the only place where the fruits can be that of righteousness okay so we're talking about the word the faith the work and the fruits and we're talking right now about the word the first one you've heard me give this scripture uh, for maybe three years now we won't stop it's one of the most paramount scriptures for those who are coming back to true faith and grace I'm sorry that uh, more people aren't taking it and run with it but I, running with it but I know how preachers are if it's not if it's not something you know we don't like giving what God gave other people well we better get away from that we're doing that anyway all we are is, is speaking that which we heard him say and him say and then we try to get up and, and look all like we got something it's all a gift Oh, we read commentaries, listen to him, get this, get that, read a book. Wow, look at this. And then we try to get up and act like, well, God just gave that to me. <laughs> you know, we need to get away from that. Come on now, somebody, I know somebody's getting mad right now, but you get over it, you stick around. You know, uh, but Proverbs 8 and 8 is, is, is such a special, powerful uh, uh, illumination in the word of God if you're focused on Christ and his work of righteousness. All the words, because we're talking about the word right now. The word, the faith, the work, and the fruit. First one, the word. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There's nothing forward or perverse in them. Remember, when you are being obedient, following the leading of the Holy Spirit of truth, which also, by the way, he's the spirit of grace. That means he also carries out the truth he gets you to surrender to. Come on now. We're told to grow in the knowledge and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit brings us more truth of Christ when he, when he gets us to surrender to it uh, to the point of following him the truth. Then he can also, as the spirit of grace, work that truth into our hearts. And in that process is the bringing about of the fruits of righteousness and somebody said amen. I've heard more in five minutes and I've heard, listen, come on. <laughs> all you got, listen folks, all you got to do is not talk about it, get focused on Jesus and get in your Bible and the Bible is going to light up. But don't forget, it's Jesus and what he did at Calvary. That's the righteous work that allows God's word to be enlightened and shined. And here comes the most important part, applied to your heart. It can, the Holy Spirit can't apply the word without your faith being in the blood of Jesus. The, the blood of Jesus, remember, the life is in the blood. The life is in the blood. When my faith is in what God did to give me life, then the Holy Spirit can illuminate God's word for my path right here in the word and lead me in it if it's in the context of Christ and his work at Calvary. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness and you hear me say it all the time. If all the words of God's mouth, if everything he's ever spoken is in righteousness because listen, it is because everything he's ever spoken is for our instruction and Paul told Timothy that all scripture is for instruction in righteousness. Why? So that God could be magnified and glorified through what he's doing in us. Amen? And Romans 1, 16 and 17 says that the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel from faith 
that comes by hearing God's word in the context of the gospel to faith, from faith to faith that comes by hearing God's word in the context of the gospel. Don't listen to these preachers. They're a dime a dozen. Some of them blow your mind if I told you who they were. They're a dime a dozen that, that tell you you ain't got to talk about the cross all the time. You better run from them, my friend. They, they, that's, a, that's a voice that's not the spirit of God. The Spirit of God is only going to point you to truth and the way he gets you to see it is always through the blood. It's no other way. No other way will you see properly. And you're not going to see properly. You're not going to see at all. You're going to go blind unless you come back to Jesus and what he did at Calvary as the object of your faith and the only object of your faith. So all the words of my mouth are in righteousness, talking about the wondrous righteousness of God, that which God made us. I didn't make myself righteous. What does that mean? I didn't make myself right with God. God did what it took to make me right with him. I just believed what God did in Christ at Calvary to make me, I can't make myself right. No man has ever made themselves right. Our righteousness, all our righteousness is as filthy rags to God. My best day without what I would call any sin that anybody saw or I was even aware of, it was still filthy before God because I was a sinner and all a sinner can produce is un righteousness and ungodliness. The problem is today that most of the church, all, although declared righteous by God and given the status as a servant of righteousness, Romans 6, if we turn our faith from the cross to all these schemes that come into the church, now we're holding God's word out of its righteous context and all that can be experienced his ungodliness and unrighteousness and his wrath is revealed from heaven against that. I've been thinking about that some this week. You know, and, and people don't like it when we say that it's those who are walking in the truth who can see whose God's wrath is resisting. Those who refuse to preach the cross. And they, they don't like that, but listen to me. Listen, when Cain and Abel brought their sacrifice, their worship to God, Abel saw God resisting Cain. Abel witnessed that. And you know what? Cain didn't like that. Cain didn't like Abel knowing that God was resisting him. And the preachers of righteousness today, the wrath of God is revealed to them against those who are only operating in ungodliness and unrighteousness. Not, I'm not talking about cussing and getting drunk. I'm talking about holding God's word out of this righteous context. Because all that can come out of that, even if it smiles and happy and glory to God and thank you, Jesus, and all the outer forms of all that, listen, all that, all that God sees is ungodliness and unrighteousness if we're not trusting in that righteous work at Calvary. Before we go any further, before we blow on through this, let's, uh, let's never mind, we'll get to it in a minute. Okay, the word, Jesus, is the living word. Jesus, the word's out of context if it's not in reference to him. You say, well, what about the, the directions to the church? What about the instructions to, about uh, this and that and all the other doctrines, teachings that are in the Bible? They got to all flow through the blood. Are they not going to do you any good? You'll just be religious. You'll just have an appearance. You'll just have a form, but you won't have the power. The power and the life is in the blood. Without it, you have none. You have religion, you have acts, you have a, a, a form, you have some appearance, but you do not have power. Those who have the power are those who were literally not 20 years ago, 20 days ago, those who are now trusting in the righteous work of Christ at Calvary. We need to remember that. And there are some who are being raised up in these last days and coming home. They're coming back to the path of righteousness. So, the, so it's the word Jesus, it's the faith he lived by, and he did live by faith. The Bible says in Hebrews 2 and 9, he tasted death for all men by the grace of God. And Galatians 2.20 says that we live today in this flesh by the faith of the Son of God. Now we've taught that wrong for 200 years. We've taught that wrong forever. That we, well, that's not really... 
we don't live by the faith of Christ. We live by faith in Christ. You, you, need, you need to let that go, although that's a fact, but that's not what the Bible says. We live because of what Jesus did by grace through faith. The Bible doesn't say that we live in this flesh because of our faith in him, although we do, but that's not what Galatians 2.20 says, and I'll show you a couple things tonight that I really want you to grab a hold of. But Jesus is the word. He said the scriptures are about him. Did he not say that in John 5 and 39, Psalms 40, verse 7, Hebrews 10 and 7, Luke 24, 44 through 46, Jesus said, look, the Psalms, the law, or uh, uh, the scriptures, they're all about me. He, the scriptures are about it. Jesus is the living word. And out of him only came words. What did he say in John 6, 63? When the, the multitude left and, and he looked at his 12 and said, are y'all going with them? And Peter said, where in the world are we going to go? You got the words of life. Jesus said this. He said, the flesh will profit you nothing, but the spirit gives life. And then he says this. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The word of God is spirit and life to us. Hallelujah. Think about that. That's powerful. Now, Jesus is the living word of God. That means for the word of God to abide and dwell, dwell, live, function in your heart, it's got to be in the revelation, the illumination of the one who said he is the light, who is the word. The scriptures are about him. There are, the scriptures, as I said, they, uh, there's all sorts of doctrines and teachings in the Bible, but they're all rooted in him and must be seen through him and his work at Calvary for righteousness outside faith in the blood doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. You don't, you don't just get it because you're a Christian. You have to keep believing in what you believed when you were saved. You understand that? Think about this. When you and I were born again, how'd that happen? We believed, watch this now, when we were born again, we heard the word of God in the gospel context and we believed with our hearts unto the righteous work of Jesus Christ at Calvary to take our sins away. Well, the Lord gave you that measure, that measure, of, the measure of that faith, not some other faith. And, the, and now think about that. When you believed with your heart, the Bible says in Romans 10 and 10, unto righteousness, and we'll get to the scripture here in a few minutes, when you believed with your heart that gospel, that word of God in the context of Jesus and what he did at Calvary, you were given that measure of faith and God set a race before you to run with that measure of faith, that portion of the faith of the Son of God because it's his faith by which we live. Even though we have this portion of that faith, God sees that as his faith. Hallelujah. And Colossians 2, 6 tells us just like we received him, we got to walk in him. So that means just exactly like you heard the word and you got from Genesis to Revelation for the Holy Spirit to guide you into all righteousness, all truth. Hallelujah, that's good stuff. So every day of your life, you, if your faith remains in Christ and his work, of righteousness at Calvary, and it has to because that's how you started. Now the Holy Spirit has the legal right to shine the light of God's word reflecting off the face and the work of Christ at Calvary into your heart. It must be seen through him. Faith can't even come unless it, unless it comes from hearing God's word in its righteous context. Faith can't come. Think about it. That's why a lot of Christians 
or calling something faith that's not faith, or maybe it is faith, but it's not biblical faith. It's not faith God honors and God rewards and God moves in and God delivers in and because. Think about that now. A lot of Christians are bound tonight. A lot of Christians, uh, they, they've turned this whole Christianity thing into what I want, when I want, with who I want, why I want, and if I don't get it, I'm leaving. I'm going home. I, I, you, this ain't for me. I ain't getting what I want. Let me tell you something. Christianity is far away from getting what we want. Christianity is about God getting what he wants in and through us because we've been made his. He bought us. He paid for us. We're his property. Amen. I don't like using that word, but we're his children. So first the word, Jesus is the living word. Then it's his faith that gave us all that we have because it's by his, by the, by his grace and through his faith that he gave his life. Now, that's the second one we're going to talk about, faith. First, it's the word. You gotta have you gotta have the word before you can have the faith. And Jesus had a word, John ten eighteen. He, you know what he says? Nobody, no man can take my life from me. He says, but I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it up again because I have this commandment of my Father. Now think about that. He had a commandment and he, he had to obey, that's faith, he had to obey his Father. He had to have faith in what his Father sent him to do. First, he had a word, go give you life for the, for the sins of humanity. Jesus came and by his faith, watch this, it's very good now. Uh, Romans 3 and 22 says, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, it doesn't say faith in him. It does take our faith in him, our hearts trust in him and his work. But that's not what the Bible says. And it's not what it means right here. Watch. It gets to us in the latter part of this verse. This, this good stuff. Even the righteousness of God, not men, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, it's unto you. That proves it's, it's not talking about you until right now. Unto all, it's to us. We didn't work for it. We didn't earn it. It's to us, and watch, I love this part, and upon us all that believe there is no difference. Now think about that. I've loved this ever since the Lord showed it to me two, three, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago. I don't know how long ago it was. But the righteousness of God is offered to men through the faith of Jesus Christ, that work of righteousness he, he did for us at Calvary through us trusting from the heart of who we are in that work. But not only is it to you, not only do you become righteous, not only are you declared righteous, not only are you made a servant of righteousness, but he says it is on you. It is on you. When, somebody, when somebody's really living for the Lord, and I, I have to say really, because a lot of people think they are, and a lot of people, it's because they want to maybe, but they don't know how. And the only way you can live for God properly is through faith, unmovable faith in Christ and his work of righteousness at the cross. There is something on those people. There is something there. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2, 14 through 16 tells you the result of that. As those people carry the knowledge, the aroma of Christ, Christ with them everywhere they go, there is there is something on them. We 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 you know some people call it uh, oh they're, they're real spiritual. They're, they're spirit. Y'all ever heard anybody say that? They're they're re that's a spiritual woman right there. Now. But what it is that we have been cloaked with God's righteousness. He didn't just give it to you, put it in you, set you on the path of it. He cloaked you in it. Hallelujah. It's all about his righteousness. It's, it's what he gave you. It's what he made you. It's the only way you can serve him. It's the path he set you on. The race of victory is the race of righteousness, and he cloaked you in it so everybody could watch you run the race of victory. Too many Christians rip the cloak off trying to do it my own way, and that's why they just fail and fail and fail and then end up quitting. Don't take that cloak off. It's an ugly cloak to the world. It's really, it, it is the, the robe of righteousness, but our uh, possibility of wearing it daily only comes through something that's real drabby and ugly to the world and most of the church today, and that's the cloak of humility. 
Oh, what an ugly cloak that is. The cloak of humility to be humble. You need to tell them how you feel. You need to quit letting them run over you. You, you need to take a stand. You need to get out there and tell them how you feel about this. It's, the cloak of humility is ugly. It's drab. It's weak. But it's, the, it's what gets you grace when you're trusting in nothing but the blood of Jesus. The Holy Spirit's pouring out on you. Hallelujah. Glory. You got to remember the cross wasn't popular. It wasn't that which appeared to be, this is it. No, it appeared to be, well, I wish that would have been it, but it wasn't. It was ugly, nasty. It was, it was, it was pitiful looking. The Bible says Jesus died through weakness. He had to because God only makes his strength perfect in weakness. Do you hear that tonight? Can you get that tonight? The cross, Jesus died in weakness because it's only in weakness God can make his strength perfect in. And that strength of God was made so perfect that today all his grace, he's the God of all grace, is sufficient for me in every situation I'm in, no matter how minor or how major, it's God's grace that I need. Hallelujah. And it only is going to come to me through my trusting in the work of Christ at Calvary. So the righteousness of God, it's by the faith of Jesus. It's by what he did by faith. Everything you and I have that we've been given, it belongs to Jesus. The grace he tasted death by, that's the grace you got if you got any at all from God. The faith that he died by, you've got a portion of that or you don't have any faith from the Lord. Let me tell you something. The faith of God, doesn't the Bible say somewhere in the New Testament, have the faith of God? You see it at Calvary. That's the faith of God right there. The faith that Jesus died by, we have a portion. We don't have no other kind of faith. If we do, it's not of God. The righteousness that we have, it's his. It's all. Now, we're joined heirs with him. That ought to make you get up and run all the way down to Dairy Queen for a dilly bar. Hallelujah. <laughs> Everything he's got belongs to me, but you got to remember it's only given to me through what he did at Calvary by my trusting in that work. And I get to experience it daily only if I'm trusting in that work alone. When I move out to something uh, that men have brought into the church, if you'll do these three things, if you'll just speak this one thing every day, I, get, I still get social media messages. If you'll share this, God will do amazing things in your life. If I believe that, God's going to stop doing amazing things in my life. I'm not getting involved in that. If I do this, God will do that. No, Jesus did did what I needed done. And because he did that, man, I've got the word now in truth. I've got righteousness. I've got faith. I've got, I've got the fruits of what he did. I've got it all, hallelujah, because of what he did. Paul says this in Philippians 3, 9, and be found in him. Now, I want you to get that tonight. Paul says, he, I won't be found. Paul already was in Christ. Paul was already a, a, a saved child of God filled with the Holy Ghost and on a mission for the Lord, consecrated, set apart like nobody's business. But yet he's still making declarations, I want to be found in him. Look, at the right hand of God in Christ, you hear me say it all the time, in the position eternally set there, we are at the right hand of God. But here we have condition, we have experience, we have activity, we have a life to live. And Paul said, I want, Lord, I want you to find me today in him. That's Listen, being found in him is different today than it was when he placed you in him. That's where you began. Paul says, I want you to find me today in him again. Not having my own righteousness, that means God ain't going to find me walking in Christ when I think I got to work for it. When I'm listening to preachers tell me, oh yeah, Jesus, but you also have to do this if you're going to be saved. No, no, I'm not going to listen. I'm running from them. Mm -mm. 
I want to be found in him, not having my own righteousness. I can't claim nothing. I want you to know, without Jesus, I don't have anything, don't have anything worth hearing, don't have anything worth giving. I don't have, I'm, I'm nothing without him, absolutely nothing. I came into this world with nothing, and he's the only thing I'm leaving with. Glory to God, but he's everything. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. Everything can, I, I've not heard this taught. I ain't read this in commentaries. I ain't, listen, this is something that if you start preaching what the Bible says, you're going to stick out. Preach what the Bible says. Share what the Bible says. And it is talking about the faith of Christ, what he did by faith. Remember Galatians 2.20? Paul said, the life we live now in the flesh, we live by the faith of the Son of God. Most translations turn out to say faith in the Son of God. That's not what it says. That's not what it means. And it explains it. We live the life we live now in this flesh, by the faith of the Son of God, here it comes, what he did by the faith it's talking about. He loved me by faith and he gave himself for me by faith. Think about that. People, and I, I speak from my own past experience, when we were trusting all the new age things that were coming into the church, the new apostolic, the new prophetic, the, the new this, the new that, the promise keepers, the, 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 the purpose driven, the government of 12, the walk of the man, everything that comes in, just winds of doctrines, golden calves, we jump on the wagon and by the end of the year it's no good and we need something different because it didn't work. It won't work. The cross is the only thing that works the righteousness of God. We, we're, we're, God's even given us a greater knowledge today, those who have come back to cross. Listen to that phrase. We've said for years, the cross is the only thing that works. Now, just tonight on this platform, God has just told me, the cross is the only thing that works righteousness. That means the cross is the only thing that works righteousness. Nothing else ever has. Nothing else ever will. The people in the old covenant couldn't even go to heaven because Jesus hadn't given his life yet. They couldn't even go to heaven because Jesus had not given his life yet. But what he did at Calvary was so powerful. Then they stepped into that which he died to give them and it was so powerful he went there and he got them and led them out because now they were more than just declared to be righteous one day and righteous in God's eyes but they stepped into the very experience of it. Nothing held them back from being with the Lord now at all. Think about it. But that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, by faith of Christ. But it's also by faith in our own hearts because we're saved by grace, which is what Christ did for us at Calvary through our heart believing unto him. So we've talked about the word. We've talked about the faith. Now let's talk about the work. And here, the Lord has been really uh, just, man, highlighting this scripture in Isaiah to me. It's really been very special, very illuminating uh, to me from the word. And that is Isaiah 32 and 17. The work, not works, the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. The work, the work of righteousness is one. It's one. There are, the New Testament calls the fruits, plural, of righteousness. But there is no righteous or experience of it in any manner without faith in what Jesus did. See, what he did at Calvary is the work that all works of the Holy Spirit, might I add, must be according to, or it's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit works by law that's in Christ Jesus. That means through our faith in what Jesus did there by faith. And this is what I've been sharing recently, and to us who can hear now, can see properly, 
It's very, very illumin, uh, enlightening that here in this particular Bible verse, God tells us that the work of righteousness shall produce peace. Colossians 1 and 20 says that Jesus made that peace for us by the blood of his cross. Do you see now that you can't separate the work of righteousness from what Jesus did at Calvary? It is the one and the same thing. It cannot be separated. If our faith remains in Christ, and I don't mean that and now also some more things, and I'll have to tell you about me and my past life, uh, Christian experience, which is uh, 99% of the church's issue right now, that we, we, we didn't turn away from the cross for initial salvation, but we didn't know it for daily victory. Not just victory. I, I get tired of hearing that the cross was just for victory over sin. The cross is so God can move and operate by all grace in our lives. Because he only works in truth, the truth of who Jesus is and what he did at Calvary. So the work of righteousness shall be peace, but watch the effect it has on those who have it. And by this you see, obviously many Christians have turned away from it because there is no effect of, of righteousness being that of the fruit of quietness and assurance. Most of the church... Is, is very unquiet, very loud, very boisterous, very opinionated, very, very anything but quiet and anything but 100% sure of what they have. If we were sure of what we had, we'd be sharing what we have. If we really had a delight in our hearts that was for God, for God's word, like we need to as Christians, then we wouldn't be all entangled in the political world, all entangled in uh, all these things that are going on. Well, you don't think our voice, you're the very ones I'm talking to right now. It's okay that you tell people how you feel, but are you spending more time telling people how you feel about things that are going on in the world that when you're dead, you're, you're gone, ain't nothing, you ain't changed nothing. You ain't changed a thing. Well, we're here to make a difference. Christian, your difference is the light of Jesus Christ. Everything else is up the world. I don't care what preacher comes along and tries to say all this stuff. It ain't nothing but the wisdom of men trying to drag us away from Calvary into a world full of mess. I ain't going, and when you do, you're going to get mad at me because you're going to be jealous when I'm quiet and I'm, I have this assurance that you're out there throwing raging fits and I'm just sitting over there smiling, happy, glory to God, just peaceful because I ain't giving it the time of day. When I take it... In any, when I have anything to do with that, it'll be before God. Lord, help us. Lord, save us. Lord, give us your wisdom. But I ain't entangling myself in all that. I'm told, listen, by the Lord that I can't be entangled in all that and be a good soldier at the same time. So, hmm, let me see. Well, it's a no-brainer. I'm going on with Jesus to be a good soldier. I'm not getting involved in that. I'll vote when it's time to vote. I'll pray when it's time to pray, which is every day but I ain't getting wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up all in that and then coming to church and putting on a two-hour special on Sunday like I'm really tied up in him. You showing who you all tangled up with on social media. You showing everybody what you're more interested in. I see more Christians sharing more of their opinions and more of the way they feel about things and they... Then the word of God, let me tell you something, out of the abundance of the heart, you speak on Facebook. Amen, Brother Curtis, or oh me and help me, Lord, I don't like that preacher no more. That's all right. Acts chapter 10, verse 34 and 35, trying to make it through this. Acts chapter 10, verse 34 and 35, then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive, of a truth now, I perceive that God is not a respecter of persons, but in every nation he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him. There ain't nobody accepted by God, number one, until they become his through faith in what his son did, that work of righteousness at Calvary, and then they're righteous. God is pleased in that. But is God pleased 
in our actions with our fruit today. Most Christians hadn't got more than going to church on Sunday as a fruit. What about all those people we work with? Do they know where we stand? Now, I'm not talking about throwing them on the ground, choking the light, the daylight, you know, choking them. You will hear what I, I believe. No, I'm, they watch you. Believe me, Christians, when you want doors to open for you, when you want them to, God's going to open them for you. You can't get around it. Lord, open the doors. Get up and go to work tomorrow. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Lord, open the doors. Then a lot of times we find out, Lord, I didn't want that many doors open. <laughs> we need to read this now. Peter said, of a truth I perceive. That God is no respecter of persons. This ain't talking about the high and mighty, the floosy thinking. About, no, this is talking about in every nation, he that fears God, in every nation, he that fears him and works righteousness. How do I work righteousness? Because Titus chapter 3 verse 5 tells me that I wasn't regenerated by any works of righteousness that I've done, but by the mercy of God, by the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only avenue through which works come. A righteous work has to be what the Holy Spirit's doing, not just me. That's, that's where we are today. We just want to be morally good. It ain't about, it, I mean, I'm not going to throw out morals because God expects us to be morally good and treat people right, and we will if we're being led by the Spirit. And he can lead us if our faith is in the righteous work of Christ. And hear me tonight, there is no righteous works in my life if my faith is in what I'm doing. That ain't a righteous work. If I think that I can get baptized in water and be righteous before God? That's not a righteous work. That's an unrighteous work. Even though it's a biblical thing, if I think I'm righteous because of what I do, I'm not. That would end up in God's eyes as what I did myself for righteousness. What's that called? Self-righteousness. So the only way we can work righteousness is if our faith is in what allowed God to move in and go to work in us, which is faith in Jesus and what he did at Calvary. And number four, the fruit. We have the word, faith comes, the work comes, and the fruit comes. That's the process of all of God's dealings with humanity. Think about Abel. What did he have? He had the word, he had faith, and while that faith was still properly placed in God's word, his works were proper and the fruit was proper. But once he heard another word and he put faith in another word, then his works were no longer acceptable by God but rejected and his fruit was not of God. Story of Adam, story of Cain, story of all who moved their faith from the sacrifice of Christ. The only thing God sees while I'm trusting in what that preacher told me, if, I'll, if I'll, I, I need deliverance, preacher, okay. The preacher tells me, if you'll start giving tithes and offerings, be in church every Sunday, read a chapter a day, pray 30 minutes a day, and God will deliver you from that. The preacher just lied to me. Now I'm trusting in what I'm doing. God can't honor it. God does honor tithing and offering. God does honor church attendance, prayer, Bible study, but he does not deliver me because of what I do. Let me say it tonight. When we experience deliverance, the fruit of that is his work of righteousness. All deliverance is the fruit of the righteousness of God that took place at Calvary. So now we're on the last one, the fruit. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 8 through 10. And God is able. You're not. How about that? Wow, I'm, 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 I'm irritated at God. God be the first one to tell you. I love you enough to tell you. You're not able without me. But with me, you're able to do what? All things. How? Through Christ, his work of righteousness. God is able to make all grace abound towards you 
that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. This is where we get our thought and our truth from that the cross of Christ, that death he tasted by grace, praise God, we've been forgiven and can be delivered from our sins, but the cross was far more than deliverance and forgiveness of sins. You had to have that to be God's. You had to be forgiven and declared righteous, but now we've got grace. I've got grace to be a husband, grace to be a good worker, grace to be a pastor, all grace. But the only avenue is the cross. That you may abound to every good work. See, it takes grace abounding to us for us to be able to abound in every good work. And grace is not mystical and magical. It's God functioning in us to bring forth the fruits of his righteousness. As it is written, he is dispersed abroad. He is given to the poor. His righteousness remains forever. Now he that ministers, he that ministers seed to the sower, both ministers bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Let me tell you something, folks. You and I are saved, born again, spirit filled. I hope you are all that's watching. If you're not, it's simple. All you got to do is trust in Jesus and the work he did for you at the cross. You can be born again right now, right now. And you could become a child of God and begin to serve Christ all the days of your life. But listen to this. Those of us who are not ashamed of the gospel and we're sowing the seeds of the gospel, that incorruptible seed, God's words of righteousness pertaining to Christ and what he did at Calvary, hear me tonight, God will multiply your seed sown. If you start sowing the right seed, God's going to multiply the seed you're sowing. Think about that and bring increase to the fruits of your righteousness. There God is calling it your righteousness when it's really Jesus's. But see, he calls it your faith, your righteousness because you're in Christ and you're trusting in Christ and his work at Calvary. Paul writes also to the church at Philippi and says this in chapter 1, verse 11, being filled, filled now. This is what, this is the, this is the uh, product, the, the manifestation of what Jesus taught on, on, his, on his mountainside, the, the Beatitudes and that teaching there on the mountain that day when he said, those that hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled. You know what that really has got to mean? Those that hunger and thirst and delight in God's words of righteousness so faith can be proper and, and they can be experiencing him because there's no other way for righteousness to take place. Are you hungry and thirsty for righteousness? You're not because you're in a sanctuary telling, oh, I'm hungry and thirsty for your righteousness because you know it's written in the Bible and the promise is to be filled, but you gotta be sitting somewhere. You gotta be being instructed somewhere by somebody who knows to point you to Calvary because there is where the work of righteousness took place so that as long as you're trusted in that, he can daily fill you with the fruits of your righteousness. Think about it being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ. He didn't say it's by you when you go do stuff. It's by Jesus Christ. He's carrying out his will in our lives by his spirit and look, it's unto the glory and praise of God. When we're being filled with the fruits of righteousness which is taking place by Jesus Christ, by the way, he is the mediator of the new covenant. When we're experiencing the Lord, it's because Jesus is imparting the benefits. The Bible says he uh, daily loads us with benefits. It's benefits from the covenant. That work of righteousness carried out for us at Calvary. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God unto the glory and praise of God. People who are being filled by the Holy Spirit with the fruits of righteousness, they're living for God. They're not living for a preacher. They're not living for a, a denomination or a certain sect, a group of people. They're living for God. They want God to be seen. The fruits of righteousness reveal him. When we see a Christian being faithful, we praise God for that. But what we do is 
we praise God for that. Because when I see your faithfulness, it is only like the moon reflecting the sun. Your faithfulness is a reflection of his faithfulness. Think about that. When I see fruits of righteousness in your life, I see him. It's going to be, you know, have you thought, man, I got so excited the other night, I couldn't even go to sleep. I was trying to tell Robin about it, and she was over halfway snoring. And uh, <laughs> when, it, Just think, when, how, many, how much time we got tonight? I got the rest of the night, she said. In the thousand-year reign with Christ, you're going to have a glorified body that's not operating on blood. It's, you're, you're driven by the Spirit, living by the Spirit, speaking by the Spirit. I, I personally believe, now this is just my thoughts, and, and you've, you're entitled to yours and I got mine, but I don't believe there's going to be emails and smartphones and not, not going to need that. You, you, all Christians are going to be spread out all over the world. What about my family? Your family is going to be everybody that's Saved. You ain't got. You're not gonna have a wife and a husband in that fact. You're not gonna need a wife. You need one now, apparently. But then you're not gonna need one. Listen, you're not gonna be living by blood. You're gonna be living and driven and speaking and thinking all by the Spirit. Jesus is not gonna have to send you an email to get you some direction. Jesus is not gonna have to get on a smartphone and try to reach you. Whatever Jesus is thinking, you're gonna be thinking. Whatever He wants done, you're just going to be carrying it out, hallelujah, not going to be no meetings, that's a waste of time it's just going to be you carrying out without meetings without internet, without smartphones, without any of that the plan of God, the witness of God, living, driven breathing, all that you do, all by the spirit, think about that don't you want to go right now <laughs> so now, I'm, I got to quit here in just a minute. I usually quit at 8 on uh, Wednesday evening. So, a couple more scriptures. This morning in my Psalms 119th chapter. Every, I can't get in that chapter without God ministering to me. I just can't open that book unless I want to hear from God. So, I open it quite often. <laughs> Psalms 119 verse 25 says, My soul cleaves unto the dust. Oh, I'm having a bad day. I feel like the dirt I was made from. Quicken thou me according to your word. Now watch this. Just down the same chapter, 15 verses later in verse 40, Behold, I have longed after your precepts, your word. Quicken me. In your righteousness. <laughs> See, there is no difference. If you're hung up all in God's word, but the fruits are not righteousness, my Lord, you either, you, 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 you're not understanding what you're reading. You don't know who it's talking about. You still think it's all about you instead of Jesus. The Bible is all about Jesus. When you begin to trust in him and his work at Calvary, then you're going to begin to understand more about the Holy Spirit. The more, let me say this tonight. The more you understand about the cross, the more you're going to understand about the Holy Spirit. The, the less you know about the cross, the less you're going to know about the Holy Spirit. You better remember that. You better be hearing the word in the context of Jesus and what he did at Calvary or you are, are, are wasting time and not redeeming it. You can't redeem the time unless it's through the cross. Amen? So just don't forget that. The word, the psalmist says, quicken me according to your word. Remember, we live by faith, but that faith must come from hearing the word of God. And then he says, quicken me in your righteousness. Remember, the righteousness comes to us through faith in the word of God in the proper context. I challenge you tonight. Study the 119th Psalm. Starting in verse 1, and at the in every verse, say, Lord, show me Jesus. Show me Jesus. Because he is God's word, God's statute. He is God's precept. He is God's law. He is God's testimony. He is God's everything that every one of those 176 verses in that chapter point to because he is the word of God. I challenge you tonight, study 
the word of God in the context of the one who said it was about him. Every jot and every tittle, even the instructions given to the churches in the new covenant as to how to live and to maintain and how have order in the church, Paul told Timothy, so that you'll know how to, you ought to behave in the church of the living God, which is the pillar of the truth. Why is that? How, how can that relate to Jesus? Because unless we understand what Paul wrote to Timothy, we won't be able to express Christ in the church and be the pillars of truth that we're called to be. Amen. Because it's all about the truth of God's word that shows forth his righteousness. If righteousness is not the end result, we've missed it. If righteousness is not the end result, we've missed it. Now, we don't need to condemn ourselves over our mistakes, but we do need to be sorrowful and repentant. And we need to get back up when we need to get back trusting, surrendering to this great truth of God's righteousness. As I said a couple of services ago, God's righteousness is a power that must be surrendered to daily through faith in Jesus and his cross because the cross, the Bible says, the preaching of the cross is the power of God. Why? Because it is the work of righteousness and God's righteousness is a power that you must, Jesus did first, surrender to it. And you must also to surrender to that truth of what he did there for you being all that you need for all grace, your life, your family, your ministry. If you'll daily trust in that work he provided you there will be changed and forever changing. And you won't be expecting everything to work out but you will be expecting him to work in all things that pertain to his will for your life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for this word tonight. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to share the great truth of your word, your son, Jesus Christ, and that work of righteousness that has brought us peace, quietness, and assurance. And the very fruit of your spirit, the fruits of your righteousness can be manifest, experienced in our lives daily. If we fight the good fight of faith, not against sin that's already been defeated, not against the devil who's already been defeated, but Lord, that we would fight the good fight of faith simply in our own hearts to trust in what you did there at Calvary so that the work I'm involved in today will have the fruit of your righteousness, that which you call my righteousness. I pray that you would bless the people of Crossway Church, whether they are physical members or are they members through social media? Bless all those that give to this ministry. Lord, pour out upon them the blessings that you've promised <clears throat> when your people would bring all the tithe and the offerings into the storehouse. Thank you for a spirit of discernment in these last days, first and foremost toward our own hearts, and then as the plank is removed from our eye, we contend with the rest of our brothers and sisters. We just give you all the praise today and ask you, Lord God, once again tonight to rebuke the plague that has plagued the earth, this noisome pestilence, God. We just pray that you would rebuke it and cast it away and, and, and cause your righteousness to be the banner over this nation once again. And we ask it all in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I guess I'll see you in the morning at 8.30 for the Romans teaching. And after that, Friday morning, be sure and tune in Sunday morning at 10 a.m. when our praise and worship team will be back singing the high praises of our faithful God. I love you. God bless you. And until next time, stay determined to know absolutely nothing but Christ and him crucified. See you then.